My name is Mary and I'm a graduate student at Pratt Institute studying art and design education. We're going to be exploring sustainable materials in art and design and actually making our own material from items that can be purchased at the grocery store and that you might already have at home. We will use green chemistry to create biodegradable plastic bags in response to New York's 2020 plastic bag ban in order to create bags that are not only sustainable but can actually sprout life. The reason that we're doing this is because a healthy future relies on the use of sustainable material and it's our job as artists and designers to pioneer that change. To create your bioplastic, you'll need the following items. Gelatin, which can be purchased at the grocery store. Glycerin or glycerol, which can be bought at the drugstore. Chopsticks. A mixing bowl. Measuring equipment. A kitchen scale. A cooking thermometer three baking trays, a cooking pot, glue, scissors, food coloring or natural dye, and gardening seeds or chia seeds. This project is a two-part project. First, we need to make our bioplastics, and after, we will make our bags. We will need three sheets of plastic, which means that we will need to repeat steps one through three, three times. You can make your plastic sheets one at a time, or you can make all three in one sitting. In order to properly dry your plastic, you will need to leave your plastic to dry for three to four days. Before you start, be sure to talk to your parents and let them know that you will be drying your plastic and using the stove on medium heat. First step in making bioplastic is to measure out your gelatin. When we use a scale, we first zero it out before adding our gelatin. So there are two ounces of gelatin. And so now we have the gelatin that we'll need to run our experiment. Next, we'll measure out our glycerol to make a solution in water. To do this, we'll combine four milliliters of glycerol with a thousand milliliters of water. We're going to add our glycerol and we're gonna stir our solution. So now what we have are the basic components of a bioplastic. Now it's time to heat our solution. We will measure out one and a half cups of our glycerol solution. Turn the stove onto medium heat and slowly heat your solution in a cooking pot. You don't want your solution to boil. We are only heating it. Using our cooking thermometer, we'll measure the temperature of our solution. As we heat up our solution, we are gradually going to add gelatin. At first, we will see that the gelatin doesn't dissolve in the water. Over time, as the gelatin heats, it will denature and form hydrogen bonds that will allow it to dissolve in the water. Now you can see that steam is coming out of my beaker and that bubbles are forming on the bottom of the solution. My temperature is 194 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius. So I'll turn off the heat and remove my mixture. If you want to change the color of your plastic, you can either use food coloring or natural dyes that you have at home, like beet juice, henna, or saffron. In this case, I'm going to use spirulina. I'm using spirulina, a biomass of cyanobacteria, because it's something that I have at home and because it creates a really beautiful green color. So I'm just putting a little bit of my spirulina into my beaker. This goes to show that there are so many things in your pantry that can be used to naturally change the color of your plastic. Once you have dyed your plastic to be the color you want it to be, you are going to grab the first baking sheet from your kitchen. We are going to take our warm mixture and carefully pour it into our baking sheet. I'm going to use my chopstick to make sure that the plastic is well distributed and to pop any bubbles that might have formed on the surface. Before we leave our plastic to dry, we need to embed it with seeds. The reason we are using seeds is to incentivize recycling. This is a tool we are using as designers to not only showcase the nature of the bioplastic, but to celebrate it. Now that my plastic is ready, I'm going to leave it to set. Once the mixture cools, it will form a gel similar to jello. We want all the water to evaporate from our plastic. So once your mixture cools, you should move it to a place where it can dry with proper air circulation. 
To create a full bag, we'll need to make two more bioplastic sheets. So, after you pour your plastic, you should repeat steps one through three to create two more plastic sheets. Here are my two dried bioplastic sheets that I have already embedded with seeds. If you look at these plastics, they behave similarly to plastic bags. Much like a plastic bag, they are very flexible, durable, and light. There is a lot of potential for what we can do with this material. In order to make my bag, I want both plastic sheets to be the same size. They are two different sizes because I poured them on different sized baking trays. With a marker, I will outline my smaller plastic on my larger plastic sheet so that I can make two identical sheets. If your sheets are already the same size, you can skip this step. After cutting along the outlines I made, I have two identical sheets. To create a handle for my bag, I am going to draw my handle on one plastic sheet before I flip my plastic sheet over to draw an identical handle on the other plastic side. Now I have two identical halves that I want to bring together. To glue my plastic sheets together, I will draw a thin line of glue on one plastic sheet along the three sides that I want to glue together. Then, I will place my second sheet on top and press the sides together to secure my plastic sheets into a bag. The last thing that I will add to my bag is a logo. To make a logo, you can trace the outline of a pattern or symbol onto your last sheet of bioplastic. I chose to write, thanks on mine. I've cut out my logo, and now I'm going to glue it to my bag. Right, so that's the end of our project. You should have a plastic bag that's fully biodegradable, like this. And inside there should be seeds that you can plant in your garden. I hope this is a fun project you can do at home. Please send any projects you make to SAS, Saturday Art School at Pratt Institute, so that we can share them. I'm really excited to see what you make. Thanks.